Good morning, aviation enthusiasts. This is uh, Otto from Otto's Aeronautical Escapades and whatnot. And today we are going to talk about turns around a point. Nobody likes turns around a point, but there is a method to the madness. It gets you used to operating at low altitudes coming in for landings. So, why turns around a point? Right here, you want to be able to use your skills as you're coming in for a landing. I remember when I first started out, those trees looked intimidating as I was coming ac across them. So turns around a point is going to help you get this procedure down at low altitudes. So without any other comments, let's get going. So what's the objective about this turns around a point? It's to determine that the applicant exhibits instructional knowledge of the elements of a turn around a point. Exhibits instructional knowledge of common errors related to turns around the point. Demonstrates and simultaneously explains turns around a point from an instructional standpoint. And analyzes and corrects simulated common errors related to turns around a point. So that's the objectives for this little briefing right here. Oh. So, under exhibits instructional knowledge of the elements of the turns around a point, you need to talk about the purpose of the turns around the point and their relationship to basic and advanced uh, airmanship. And that is basically coming in for a landing, getting into the landing, landing pattern and all that good stuff how to select a suitable altitude, right? Suitable altitude for turns around the point, it's from 600 to 1,000 AGL, right? Similar to maybe a pattern altitude, right? How to select a suitable ground reference point with consideration given to the emergency landing area. So you gotta select a suitable point for you to be able to turn around it, but you also are gonna be at low altitude, so you definitely want a suitable place to land if something happens. And obviously, orientation, division of attention, and planning, all of that comes into effect, because you gotta figure out, all right, where's my downwind, where am I gonna be oriented, Am I going to have it off my left wing like in a traditional landing pattern? And planning, it takes a little bit of planning, mental planning, to start this procedure. <clears throat> Got to be configured, right? Got to have the right airspeed for entry. And the entry procedure itself. You want to enter downwind, downwind for the turns around the point. And you're never going to get a day with, uh, without winds. So somewhere around that circle, you're going to have to compensate for wind drift. And how to maintain your desired altitude, air speeds, and distances from the reference point. You got to make sure you can do all this, right? And coordinated flight. You definitely want to have a coordinated turn. You don't want to have a skid by no means, right? <clears throat> and here's the inst exhibits instructional knowledge of common errors related to the turns around the point. So this is what you need to be familiar with and to be looking for. Faulty entry procedures. Did you enter downwind, right? Sort of like entering the, the landing pattern at a 45 degree, right? Did you enter downwind? Did you have everything planned out, right? 
Did you keep your flight coordinated or was it uncoordinated? Because you're low to the ground and that's why we do turns around a point because you're gonna be low to the ground during landing and you do not wanna have cross control skids and that cut you know, type of thing that you can't recover from a stall because you're not that far off the ground. And uh, did you compensate for wind drip? Wind drip, right? Or did you have a true circle or did it look more like an oval or an egg shape? <clears throat> Failure to maintain speed and altitude. That's another big one. <clears throat> and when you found a good ground reference point, did you find a suitable off-field landing site since you're gonna be down maneuvering close to the ground, right? So obviously when you do your turns around a point, you're gonna run your landing gear checklist, right? You're gonna turn your landing light on, you're gonna go mixture rich, right? You're gonna do all those things just to be seen out there. <clears throat> so, here's a nice point right here. Open fields everywhere, right? And there's a road, there's a road. We can turn around right where the roads intersect. Right? So select ground reference point with a place where you can have an emergency landing if you need. And this is out in the middle of nowhere, so you could probably land it right on the road if you had to. So select a good ground reference point where you can see how you're coming around the turns, but also don't forget to select ground reference where you can make an off-field landing. So now you've found a great ground reference part, <laughs> spot. Now you want to see, all right, where is the wind coming from? Could you be that lucky and have a, a no wind day? Hey, it could happen, right? Early mornings it could happen. But if you need to find wind direction, of course, Here's your Garmin right here, and right there, you see your wind direction, right? You can see where it's coming at them. But you can also, if there's any body of water around, you can look down and see which way the waves are going. Of course, if there's smoke out there anywhere, look at the direction of the way the smoke is going. And if you were over a farmer's field with some wheat, you could see which way the wheat's blowing. So that's the way you could determine your wind direction because you got to enter the turns around a point going downwind. Once you figure out, all right, I got my point selected. I know which way the wind's coming from. You want to do your clearing turns. You got to be safe out there. Certainly, you are not going to be wanting to be in this airspace right here, right? Even though we know that's just pictures taken over a amount of time. But you definitely want to make sure you're clear of uh, all other aircraft in the vicinity. So do not forget your clearing turns and don't forget your landing checklist. <clears throat> so now here we go. We did all that. We're ready to go, right? We're ready to finally do our turns around the point. So you're going to go ahead and enter in a downwind and downwind. Hey, just how you enter the landing pattern. Come in at 45 degrees, downwind, left downwind, right? If it's left-handed traffic or right downwind, if it's right-handed traffic. So we're going to enter downwind. So we got a tailwind. So this is, we're going to be going the fastest at this point right here. <clears throat> but don't forget to enter downwind at the recommended airspeed and an altitude between 600 and 1,000 foot AGL. So now you've got all that worked out. We're entering downwind, right? So here we go. Here we are coming in downwind. 
we're going the fastest right here, right? The speed is the greatest as we enter downwind because we have a tailwind. So when we make our first turn, it's gonna be the steepest angle of bank. And it makes sense, right? We're going fast and we gotta bank it pretty hard at that first turn. But all the while, we're keeping our eyes out of the cockpit, looking for traffic, making sure our turns looking good, keeping our uh, turns around the point in, uh, in the peripheral vision of our eyes. So now we're banking it, right? We're coming around that first turn. We banked it pretty steep. Now we can lessen the turn out. Now we're going crosswind just like if you were coming in to land. Now we're gonna turn base. Base is basically we're turning crosswind. So here we go, we're turning at the second turn. So we don't have to be as steep. We don't have to be as steep. We can start shallowing our turn out right here at the second turn. And then as we're coming around, right now, we're going against the wind. So this is gonna be the slowest part of the circle right here. So obviously, we're gonna shallow our bank out even more. We're gonna shallow our bank out. And then, as we start coming around for our last turn, we're gonna go ahead and give it a moderate bank, right? And you might have to go ahead and do the circle again. If not, roll out right here, right here, wings level at the proper altitude and the proper airspeed. It's, it's important that you just basically you get used to doing maneuvers lower to the ground because taking off is one thing. If you take off, you have to land. So you definitely want to know what you're doing when you're that close to the ground because you're not going to have time to recover if you go into a skidding stall, skidding cross control stall. That's not going to be good. So that's why we do turns around the point, S turns, and the rectangular pattern to get you ready to come in for a landing because you must land unless you're going skydiving and you're going to jump out of the airplane. Then you don't, well, then you land yourself with the parachute, right? Whatever goes up must come down. <clears throat> so, as we go into the turn, we're going to have a steep bank angle because we're going the fastest at this point. And then we can lessen the bank as we come around to the second part. Once we reach 180 degrees, we're going against the wind. So this is gonna be the slowest part and we can lessen our bank. It's gonna be the, the less bank, less bank, shallow, shallow bank. And then as we start coming around, we're gonna go cross wind again. So we gotta increase the bank a little bit more. And then we could possibly just go wings level and roll out and move on and hopefully you did everything good and you're going to get a pass or you might have to go ahead and do another circuit it's all up to the instructor so that's turns around the point <clears throat> here's just another look at it right here right so here we are we're coming in downwind downwind we're going the fastest we need the steepest bank angle and then as we're coming around the circle we can gradually reduce the bank angle and then 180 out we're the slowest at this point so we can have a shallow bank <clears throat> and then as we come back around to the starting point we can increase our bank just a little bit more a little bit more so that's turns around the point. Now, let's go back to the objective. Hold on. Now, here's 
the errors related to turns around the point. Faulty entry procedure. Did we take our time? Did we figure out which way the wind's blowing, right? Of course, you can cheat with your little Garmin G1000 and look at the wind direction. But if you don't have that, just look outside. Look for some smoke. If there's a little pond, look and see if there's ripples on top. Which way are the little ripples moving? Is there uh, corn grown in a field, wheat grown in a field? Which way is it blowing? So make sure you enter the proper way and you got an emergency place to land, which is gonna fall under this one right here. Poor planning, you didn't plan. Right? You did not think about, ooh, what if I have an emergency and have to land? <clears throat> and did you make sure your eyes wasn't always in the cockpit? You should have them out of the cockpit. You can glance at your instruments, right? But you definitely want to have eyes out of the cockpit because you are looking for other traffic at the same time. Uncoordinated use of flight controls, right? <clears throat> are you coming around the turn and you think oh I'm making a left turn so I can go ahead and put a little bit of left rudder in there oh you don't really want to do that because then you're gonna be uncoordinated so you want a nice coordinated turn improper correction for wind drift and that's probably why you're gonna have to do it at least twice because the first time you're gonna get the feel of what the winds doing right so you're gonna know the second time around <clears throat> you're not gonna have to go as far out when you're you're coming back into the wind right you're not gonna have to go as far out <clears throat> did you maintain your airspeed and the selected altitude did you start at a thousand AGL and then did you roll out at a thousand AGL plus or minus right plus or minus <clears throat> and right there i already said that did you make sure you had a good spot and some emergency landing places you picked out all right so if this happens here this is where i'm going to go which if you had a nice secluded area like this you got all these roads right here you could make an emergency landing on. So this is definitely no obstacles, right? This would be a definite good place to do turns around the point. So that's about it, turns around the point. Why do we do it? Because we gotta get familiar with operating at slower speeds and lower to the ground. So turns around the point, s turns <clears throat> rectangular patterns they're all there for a reason and that's to get you ready to be a good pilot and to be able to make good landings and speaking of landings it's better to go missed than to try to salvage a bad landing and if you're not coming in just perfect by the book right you should go around because you're too close to the ground to be doing uncoordinated flight for sure so hence why we do these ground procedures ground reference procedures all righty hopefully you got something out of that if you didn't fire me oh that's why i'm autos aero escapades and whatnot all right Thanks for watching. See ya.